Hey guys, Chris here, and I am going to be doing a review of the new peripherals by Apple, the Magic Keyboard and Magic Trackpad 2. Let's get started. So recently, Apple finally upgraded their peripherals, their previous generation keyboard, mouse, and trackpad units uh, were very, very good Bluetooth devices. Um, they all ran on AA batteries, which was a major drawback, um, and they just hadn't been refreshed in a long time. So these particular devices no longer run on AA batteries. They all have internal batteries, and they last for a very long time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with the keyboard first. So first thing I'm going to do is take you around the Magic Keyboard. So first I'm going to explain why they call it the Magic Keyboard. So um, as I mentioned, these do not have the familiar battery hump in the back of them. It's more of a wedge-shaped uh, unibody design because the battery is all internal. And the reason they call it the Magic Keyboard is because here on the back is a lightning port. And in previous iterations of their keyboards, you had to put some batteries in them and turn them on and put them in pairing mode and go to your computer and go to your Bluetooth settings and do all this stuff. So this computer actually comes with a lightning cable. It's charged via the lightning cable. But what happens is when you connect the keyboard to your computer, via your lightning cable, the pair is done automatically in the background. So that's the first thing about this new keyboard. The second thing about the keyboard is its overall design. So now you have a full-size row of function keys up top. The arrow keys are a bit different. Um, it's there. Uh, the keys are the, t uh, the, how do I explain this? The travel of the keys are a bit shallow, it's a bit shallow uh, compared to the older keyboard, but you really don't notice the difference. Uh, the battery life on this thing, I think they said it has 45 days of standby time, but like I said, you don't have to put any new batteries in it, you just pull out a lightning cable, which it comes with, plug it into your computer, and I'd say give it about two hours and it will be fully charged and you can also use this while charging. Um, on the back here you do have um, an on off switch. It's currently off because it's paired to my Mac which I, re which I am going to actually be reviewing tomorrow morning. I did an unboxing of it because I just picked this up last night. If you would like to see the unboxing it's up on my channel. Um, farther down here, here is the lightning port in the center. And then you have like a uh, an area for the Bluetooth signal to escape here on the back as well. No doors on the bottom at all. Uh, there are some little, little rubber feet there to help it stick to the desktop. And that's pretty much all it is. Next, I'm going to be going on to the Magic Trackpad 2. So here is the Magic Trackpad 2 and there are a couple of key features that I want to cover after I go through the design. So here you have the entire surface of the trackpad to use. Now the trackpad actually doesn't physically click. If I press on it because it's off nothing happens but this actually has a uh, haptic feedback motor inside of it so like the new macbooks when you click it gives you the sensation of clicking which is totally awesome it's the same wedge shape as the keyboard same dimensions and everything on the back you have an on off switch you have a lightning port it pairs the same way as the keyboard you just plug the lightning cable into the computer and it's automatically paired and you have a little strip here to let the bluetooth sensor out and that's pretty much all the trackpad is um, it's a lot bigger surface area than 
the previous trackpad. It has a, it's actually the biggest trackpad that Apple has ever made as far as surface area. And because of the haptic feedback, you can click anywhere on this trackpad. With the previous ones, you could only click about the bottom third to two thirds of the trackpad because of the hinge mechanism that's used. But because the clicking is simulated, this thing just senses pressure. So I could press in the top corners or anything and it will click no matter where I press, which is really nice. The haptic feedback does not actually work because the device is powered off. But if it were on, I'm going to go ahead and power it on with the switch here. There we go. And I'm going to press it, see if you can hear it. There you go, I can hear my computer talking over there. But you could actually hear it clicking, but see now that it's off, nothing happens. But anyway, that's just a quick review of the new peripherals. I'm gonna put them back side by side here so you can see that they go really good together because they are the same dimensions, have the same tilt and everything. I keep these devices side by side on my desk and they work really well. Hope you guys enjoy.